This is the second part of my MCZ24 team analysis and predictions. If you haven't seen part 1, go watch that first so you can see my first half of the team analysis. In this video, I'll be going over Cyan to Pink and explaining my final predictions for MCC24. Subscribing supports the channel, so consider hitting that button. Anyways, let's get right into it. On the Cyan Coyotes are Hannah X6 Rose, Jojo Solos, AMC, and Pearl. For Hannah's stats, I decided to use Tubbo. Finally, Hannah joins MCC. I really like this team, and I'm hoping for a Jojo pop off again. With AMC and Pearl fitting perfectly on this team, we get to finally see another full woman team. Some games that Cyan wants to play later are To Get To The Other Side, Sky Battle, and Battle Box. With To Get To The Other Side, I'm fully hoping and expecting Hannah to pop off, and with Jojo being cracked at it, this team could definitely perform well in it. Although AMC is a bit under average, and Pearl is around average, I feel like it's not really going to affect them that much at all. For Sky Battle, I'm expecting Hannah to do pretty well at it. And AMC really popped off in the last event, and Jojo is pretty good at it too, getting quite a bit above the average. Pearl is a bit below average, but it really doesn't affect how this team will perform in it. For Battle Box, we all know Jojo is insane at it, showing that she can lead teams to victory like Yellow 22. I think Hannah will do around average, and Pearl is a bit below average, with AMC never playing it before, but with Jojo as a team leader, I feel like they have a chance to do well in it still. Some games that Cyan wants to skip are Parkour Tag, Ace Race, and Sands of Time. Now, Cyan has some pretty good games that I went over before, but they also have some really bad games too. If any of these games are played late, it's basically over for them. For Parkour Tag, they have the lowest average in the event, with all of them performing far under average in it, and I'm not predicting Hannah to do that much better. For Ace Race, Jojo is quite far above the average, but AMC and Pearl really struggle in it, and Ace Race is always hard for newcomers like Hannah. For Sands of Time, Jojo really struggles in it, Pearl does a little below average, and AMC and Hannah have both never played it before, so it feels like they definitely need to skip this game. On the Aqua Axolotls are Fruit Berries, Smallish Beans, Cub Fan, and Good Times with Scar. This is one of my personal favorite teams, and I really think it's really such a fun vibe. I feel like they have a really good shot at winning, especially with a good game order. Some games that Aqua might want to play later are Rocket Fleet Rush, Survival Games, and Sky Battle. You might be surprised that Buildmarb isn't on here, but statistically, it's not in their top 3 games. For Rocket Fleet Rush, Fruit does very well in it, getting far above the average. Drill also does very well in it, and Cup and Scar do around average, so I would say this team is very good in this game. For Survival Games, Fruit is insane at it. Scar does above average in it, and Joel and Cub do a bit above average as well, so this team would also want to play this game later. But be warned because they can get unlucky and be picked up early as well if they aren't careful. For Sky Battle, once again, Fruit is insane at it. Joel and Cub do above average, and Scar does around average, so this team would do very well in this game too. Some games Aqua wants to try and avoid are Ticket to the other side, Battle Box, and Ace Race. For Ticket to the other side, Fruit is actually insane at it. But Joel does around average, and Cub and Scar do below average, so overall they won't get many team bonuses. For Battle Box, Fruit is pretty good at it, getting quite a bit above the average, but Joel and Scar do around average, and Cub does below average in it. For Ace Race, Fruit once again does very well in it, getting far above the average. And Joel does a bit above average, but Cub tends to do a bit below average, and Scar does far below average, so it may be risky for them to play. On the blue bats are Sabnap, Sylvie, Foolish, and G Nelly. This team seems actually busted to me at least. The trio of Sabnap, Sylvie, and Foolish is very scary, with all of them having potential to place in the top 15. G is a grinder who could perform better in this event. This team also has a lot of weaknesses, so they need to get a good game order to do well, I think. Some games Blue wants to play later are Battle Box, Survival Games, and Parkour Tag. For Battle Box, we all know that Sabnap is insane at it, getting far above the average. Sylvie, Foolish, and G all do around average, so this team could definitely pop off in it under Sabnap's guidance. For Survival Games, once again Sabnap is insane at it, Sylvie and G do well, and Foolish does around average, so this team could be very scary in this game. With Parkour Tag, Sabnap does very well in it, Foolish also does very well in it, Sylvie does around average, and G struggles a bit. So I can see this team popping off in it with the insane Sabnap and Foolish duo. Some games that Blue wants to skip are Rocket Sleep Rush, Take It to the Other Side, and Build Map. For Rocket Sleep Rush, Sabnap does a bit above average, Foolish does around average, and Sylvie and G struggle at it. For Take It to the Other Side, Sabnap does around average again, but the other three struggle in it. They might be able to get some team bonuses, but I'm not sure about that. For Build Mart, funnily enough, Sabnap and Sylvie are pretty average at it, and G is really good at it, getting high above the average, but Foolish has never played it before, which isn't good for them. On the purple pandas are Illumina, Ragai Rocky, Michael McChill, and Krinios. This team is actually busted, especially for Illumina. Illumina, Ragai, and Krinios can all get top 15, and Michael can also perform very well. Also, the vibes on this team will be very fun, it will be a great bot to watch. Some games that Purple wants to play later are Build Mart, Battle Box, and Ace Race. It's insane to think that three of their best games are all from the different three categories. For Build Mart, Illumina, Michael, and Krinios all do really well in it, and Ragai just around average, so this team will dominate in this game. 
With the right comms and strategy, I can definitely see this team getting first in it. For Battlebox, Illumina is cracked at it, Krinius and Ragai are above average, and Michael does around average. For Ace Race, Illumina is actually insane at it, dominating it completely. Krinius does very well as well, Ragai does around average, and Michael does quite a bit below average. Some games that Purple wants to skip are Sky Battle and Grid Runners. Sky Battle is basically their only weakness with Illumina doing around average and the other three doing below average. They need to hope this game is played early. Grid Runners is another decently bad game for them, Greenhouse does very well in it, Illumina does well, and Ragai does around average, but Michael struggles in it, which might make the team slower to finish. On the pink parrots are Filza, In the Littlewood, Captain Sparkles, and Ant Venom. This is a very interesting team because it doesn't have any A plus tiers or S tiers on it. However, Margin is coming off of a win in MCC 23, Captain Sparkles is coming off of two of his best events ever in terms of stats, and Phil has recently become more consistent with placements when he used to be one of the least consistent players in the event. Ant Venom also joins the event on this team, which can make this team a real wild card because I can see Ant Venom placing almost anywhere on the leaderboard. Some games Pink wants to play later are Hole in the Wall, Ace Race, and Meltdown. For Hole in the Wall, Phil does far above average in it, and Captain and Marchin also do around average in it. I'm going to assume that Ant Venom will do decently in it, and won't bring the team down. For Ace Race, Captain and Phil do really well in it, getting top 15 most times. Martin does quite well, getting above average still, and Ant Venom maybe struggles a bit, but I don't think he will that much, because he's been practicing Ace Race a lot. For Meltdown, Martin pops off a ton in it, mostly based on his last performance. Captain does quite well in it as well, Phil does around average, and Ant Venom might struggle since it's confusing for him for the first time around. Some games Pink wants to try and skip this event are Survival Games, Sky Battle, and Groove Runners. For Survival Games, only Phil and Captain place around average, Martin does under average, and Ant Venom doesn't seem to be like much of a PvPer to me, so I think they're going to struggle. For Sky Battle, only Martin does above average, while Captain and Phil struggle, so I'm assuming Ant Venom will as well. For Grid Runners, Captain and Phil do average, Martin does under average, and I think that Ant Venom might do around average or better due to his vast Minecraft knowledge. And that's it for my last 5 MCC team analysis. Now, let's get into where I think each team will place in the event and what my predictions are for the, each team. In 10th place, sadly, are the Pink Parrots. Although I can see this team placing higher, I feel like it's a really competitive event, and this team might have a leadership role issue as well. Also, having a new player in your team usually doesn't help. In 9th place are the Green Geckos. This team could honestly place anywhere, but I'm putting it here due to the fact that the other teams just seem stronger in power overall. In 8th place are the Cyan Coyotes. Although I can see Hannah popping off with JoJo's last event, this team seems like it won't stack up against the other teams quite as well. In 7th place are the Red Rabbits. This team could definitely get much higher than this, but I'm putting them in 7th due to the fact that the other teams I think are just overall will do better in each game. In 6th place are the Aqua Axolotls. This is a crack team, and with not too many weaknesses, this team could definitely get first, but I'm keeping them here because I'm not sure the game order will work in their favor this time around. In 5th place are the Yellow Yaks. This is a grinding team, but with Skeppy basically being a newcomer again, this team might fall under the arrest of the top 4. In 4th place are the Purple Pandas. This team is absolutely crazy, with almost no weaknesses. I feel like they could be inconsistent in placement though, because of the lack of the events that Krinios and Michael have been in recently. In 3rd place are the Blue Bats. This team is very scary, dominating PvP and even movement games. I didn't put them any higher because of a simple team game that can totally knock them out of dodgeball. In 2nd place are the Orange Ocelots. This team has almost no weaknesses, and is absolutely powerhouses in strength. I only put them in 2nd because of Lime, for reasons you'll learn right up next. And finally, in 1st place, are the Lime Llamas. I also predict this team to win dodgeball. This team is absolutely broken, with Kratzy, CPK, and Scott all being able to make top 10. With like no weaknesses, this team could definitely just dominate the event easily and win it all. And that's it for this video. Consider joining the Discord for some sneak peeks at future uploads and just hanging out. Link is in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.